Okay, so now we go to the third architect. We saw Nicolas Grimshaw, we saw Claude Perrault, and now we are going to see one of the most important architects of the 19th century, and that is the German Karl Friedrich Schinkel. Born in 1781 and died in 1841. Uh, truly an important, uh, an important architect. So he died on the 9th of October, and that's why we talk about him uh, today, but was born on the 13th of March, 1781. Was a Prussian architect, city planner and painter who also designed furniture and stage sets. Schinkel was one of the most preeminent architects of Germany and designed both neoclassical and neo-Gothic buildings. His most famous buildings are found in and around Berlin. This was the man. Initially, he wanted to be a painter, but uh, uh, something made him change his mind. He realized that he perhaps cannot achieve greatness in painting. So he began to do architecture, but he also painted a lot. And, um, you know, architects who paint uh, are uh, to be found even today, but not too many painters who also build. And that's probably unfortunate. Anyway, this is Karl Friedrich uh, Schinkel. Uh, and he was very, very well regarded uh, in those few years when postmodernism was uh, the, the rule, so to speak. Now I'll show some paintings by him. Interestingly, you know, he is considered uh, in, some, in some measure, to an extent, a neoclassical architect, but he loved the Gothic, as you can see. This is Gothic architecture. But even as a painter, as you can see, he was preoccupied with architecture, with buildings. Even here, there is a lot of landscape, but what is happening here? Architecture again. So very different now from Nicolas Grimshaw and Claude Perrault. And now we arrive at this German architect and artist or painter who now shows us uh, some of his paintings. And then we are going to see his buildings, important buildings in, in Berlin, very, very important. The Altes Museum, perhaps one of the most important buildings in Berlin. Uh, look at this, you know, it is, uh, you, you could perhaps compare it to an extent with the Eastern facade of the Louvre by Perrault, but it's a different sensibility. Look at the uh, size of the column, columns, you know, compared with the uh, human uh, silhouette. Who cares that the columns are darkened by the passage of time? I think it's even more impressive. It doesn't have to be white and clean. It, 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 can, it can show that it is an architectonic organism that reacted to the, to the elements. Uh, yes, in the, in, the, in the rendering of the 19th century, it looks luminous and whitish and so on, but uh, more than a century passed since then. In my opinion, architecture is beautiful when it doesn't severe the relationship with art. Even Grimshaw, you know, in his handling of technology, had, I think, an artistic sensibility. 
and he even collaborated with artists, as you saw in the Eden project, with a sculptor. Claude Perrault also collaborated with Charles Le Brun, a painter, and he himself had a diverse interests. This was, of course, inspired by the uh, Pantheon in Rome. This is a model of a, of a skyscraper uh, designed and proposed by uh, Miss van der Rohe, actually, which was not built. So the Altes Museum uh, in Berlin, he also designed the building that you see here on the right. Karl Friedrich Schinkel in Berlin. In a way, Karl Friedrich Schinkel succeeded in marrying and bringing together romanticism with classicism. And that this is not easy, but he did it. In my opinion, his building is warmer than the Eastern facade of the Louvre by Perrault and the others. And maybe this in part is because of the, of the uh, the artistic sensibility of, of, of Schinkel. Yeah, he is uh, painted with a section through the building. I mean, these, these columns uh, had seen, uh, had witnessed war, you know, wars actually, it's plural, but the Second World War was, uh, you know, uh, devastating uh, the city and yet look at the columns i think they have they have nobility although they suffer the interior is clean yes but the exterior testifies about the drama of history a drama which human beings generated now the schaus spielhaus the spielhaus uh, in berlin it's a theater uh, in berlin from 1825 also built by him almost 200 years old, this building. In four years, it will be 200 years old.
you see, ravaged by war. Now the, uh, the other national gallery in Berlin is the building that we saw a fragment of uh, on the right side of that picture with uh, the Altes Museum. There was an influence coming from Greece, of course, the uh, you know ancient Greece in his architecture. But it is still a 19th century architecture. Interestingly, that although in his paintings he showed a, a Gothic sensibility and he loved the Gothic cathedral and so on, his architecture, his built work is actually not Gothic. Now this building is a smaller building, uh, still in the, you know, not far away from the other buildings that we saw. I don't know exactly what was its function at first. It looks like some kind of a temple, uh, well, built in the 19th century. And it was appropriated also for a while by the Nazis. There were military ceremonies taking place in front of the building and even inside the building now is a sculpture by uh, a statue a sculpture by cat uh, uh, kelvitz the mother and the son inside here it is uh, this this work by an important uh, german artist kelvitz Kathy kelvitz it's some kind of a memorial there um, maybe it was like this from the very, very beginning. Now we see here a competition by Miss van der Rohe for a memorial inside this uh, building by Schinkel. This is the work and uh, is, uh, I, I think, a very nice uh, rendering by Miss. Back to what it is now, the mother and the son. Now the Schinkel Pavilion from 1824, it's called the Pavilion. It's a little house actually, and here it is. 
it's almost modern in a way. It's very simple. Uh, it's a box in a way, but uh, the oblongs, I think, uh, you know, have a role uh, in playing in a role that to 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 make the box uh, less rigid. It's an elegant building. And again, uh, his neoclassicism, I think, is, is warmer than the neoclassicism of Claude Perrault in France. These are also newer buildings from the 19th century, not from the 17th century. The plan is perfectly symmetrical. Why do you think that he had, and not just him, there was this interest in, uh, you know, uh, bringing ornamental design to the walls, something we don't do? Now, a church, uh, you know, again, the, the church it has some Gothic elements like the windows, but they are much less so-called Gothic compared to his paintings. interesting exhibition inside the church. Well, he was not responsible for the exhibition, of course. Well, the interior is uh, clearly inspired by, by the Middle Ages, by the Gothic. It's 
So it seems in his church design, he was not any longer neoclassical. He was inspiring from the Middle Ages, and I would say appropriately so. Now, a chapel he built in Russia, not in Germany, the Alexander Nevsky Chapel. Here it is. Okay, now this this is a, a castle, you know. Uh, I don't like castles in general, but uh, anyway, it was built by uh, Carl Friedrich Schinkel more than 150 years ago. Castles look a little bit strange to us because their function is so removed from you know, the, the functions associated with democratic modern states. Okay, uh, another church in Potsdam. Although here, you know, I have to contradict myself for what I said earlier. Actually, the influence is not any longer the Gothic. Yeah, there is neoclassicism. It's more or less a cubical, uh, large, uh, large building, a cubical church. With a dome above it in Potsdam, in Germany. He built a lot. He died at 60, but um, yeah, he built a lot. Another church in Berlin, this one also clearly, um, you know, inspired by classicism or um, you know, neoclassicism. It's closer to a temple in a way, in its, in its look than, than uh, you know, a, a, a typical church. The inside the damage by war is interesting, though, you know, even like this as a partly ruined, uh, ruined building. Uh, probably, I don't know, it might be, I don't know if, if it was restored or not. But uh, 
it's possible there are now you know concerts and uh, maybe it's not used any longer as a church i see marina abramovic here her, her sculptures so art shows concerts take place within the building by schinkel a former church Another church. This one has uh, is a little bit different from the other one, but still, it's almost closer to, you know, Romanic architecture, or Romanesque. It's well proportioned, uh, although its geometry is rather closer to classicism or neoclassicism. It's a cube again but it's worked up by details and i think it's it's a fine building a palace in potsdam the charlotte and hope palace what can we say? You know, there are castles, there are palaces. Again, they, they don't really match the, you know, the needs of a democratic society, but they were not built uh, during a modern democracy. So, you know, they are probably now all these palaces used either for, you know, festivities or maybe for museum functions. Now we are approaching the end of the presentation. Here is a tent room, and uh, it's 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 quite nice, you know. It's 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 architecture, though it is uh, essentially a tent. It is a tent, but uh, a tent designed by an architect, probably for a king or some kind of you know elite uh, person, um, probably the king. It's it's quite nice, I think. And it's nice because it is architecture, but it's also the fragility of the fabric, the textile that uh, makes it, uh, you know, warmer. And uh, it has, uh, you know, wood on the floor, but otherwise the building is, is a tent, if we are to call it a building. And some architectural drawings by uh, Schinkel. He drew, uh, you know, he has very nice renderings, of course, done manually. How else? I guess some of these renderings were not done just for specific projects, but, um, you know, his, his own, uh, you know, imaginative, uh, you know, perspectival drawings of uh, yeah imagined uh, imagined buildings so the, the the fantasy of the architect is important even if, when you don't build you can Im imagine buildings as you would like them to be built even if you don't build them these are rather utopic set settings you know inspired by old greece or whatever you know they were not meant to be built but his artistic imagination generated them and probably 
you know, they had this function of, of keeping him, uh, you know, alert, so to speak, alive, artistically speaking. These are, you know, architectures of an ideal world or an idealized world. We don't believe any longer in utopia, but uh, maybe we should again uh, allow ourselves to dream a little bit, at least from time to time. We saw the building here as it was built. Again and again, if we remove the ornaments, the ornamentation, ornamentation from, from these renderings, what do we get, you know? It would have been inconceivable for him in the 19th century not to have ornaments. And here they are. It was a much richer architecture because of that. You know, in our time, we are obsessed with space and nothing but space. But uh, I think architecture is more than just space. And also a concern with nature, as you can see, these are architectures, but they are within, you know, complex natural landscapes. Structural studies, interiors. This one we saw built, a villa. Carl Friedrich Schinkel. He had an artistic sensibility. He was also a painter, but he was also a very convincing and gifted architect. And I think now I end the presentation with this stage design for the magic flute, the hall of stars in the palace of the queen of the night, act one, scene six, from 1847 to 1849. And here it is. So he did stage design too. And I, I continue to say, it's important for architect to manifest herself, himself artistically as well. Let's not forget that the great architects usually had artistic sensibilities. And I think even Nicholas Grimshaw had and has. Thank you. <laughs>